Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So there's new Supergirl footage and we saw a bunch of the new comic book characters. The one that wasn't in the trailer that we have seen before though is Red Tornado. They released a picture of him. So I'm just going to do a brief explainer for each of these characters, starting with the biggest one, Maxwell Lord. I would be amazed if you guys had not seen Peter Facinelli before. I won't judge you depending on where you saw him, no judging here, but let's just say he does a really good job of playing villains with poise or, you know, characters that are relatively complicated. I think just because of his physicality, I think it'd be harder for him to play one of the comic book characters that does a lot of punching and kicking. The ones that Supergirl is going to be fighting with, WWE style. You could think of Maxwell Lord as like a really quiet, subtle psychopath. A lot of his big comic book storylines paint him that way. But really, he's just another character like Malcolm Merlin on Arrow. He has a grand design that just clashes with the hero's grand design. We don't know exactly how the show is going to introduce him, but he looks more like a wealthy businessman than a government official. Most of my exposure to Maxwell Lord started after Identity Crisis, dur during his checkmate years. But if you go further back in the comics, he was actually a longtime friend of the Justice League. He was very influential in their creation. He helped bring a lot of them together. It was during the Countdown to Infinite Crisis when he really went dark, when they took the character super dark. They retconned some of his backstory and said that during his years with the Justice League, when he was arguably doing good things, he was secretly collecting information on all the world's superheroes. I know we've been talking about Blue Beetle and Booster Gold a little bit lately. He actually ends up killing the Ted Kord Blue Beetle at the end of that story. That was what really set the stage for the next Blue Beetle to come along, the Jamie Reyes character. Based on some of this footage, it seems like he's going to be interacting with both the Super characters and with Cat Grant's character. So he'll straddle both of the different worlds of the show. Like you have the storyline where Supergirl's trying to hunt down aliens, then you have her life as Kara, like her life during the daytime. And obviously there's going to be times when those two things will overlap, where like she'll have to do Supergirl things in the middle of a workday, and then there'll be straight up times when she's only interacting with characters as Supergirl, like when she's, she's out on patrol at night. Most of you probably know that he's one of the most powerful telepaths on the earth. It just is a way to keep him from getting too overpowered. The, the side effects of using his push ability, like the ability to push his will on other people, causes him to get nosebleeds, weakens him. If you guys never read Brightest Day, it's a really good Jeff Johns Green Lantern comic book. It was one of the last Green Lantern storylines he wrote. So in that, Maxwell Lord gets resurrected and then tries to erase all memory of him from everyone's minds on the planet. He calls it his biggest push ever. He had to enhance his abilities with tech, but it causes his brain to hemorrhage big time. Later in that storyline, he actually becomes one of the White Lanterns. I think that was just Jeff John's way of having fun with a villain character. They're just like a couple of villains that are chosen as guardians of all life in the universe. But if, if you want to read more about that, just check out that storyline. I don't think the TV show is going to be doing any specific comic book storyline, but if I do spot anything, I'll mention it whenever I make videos. A really good example of the TV shows doing comic book storylines is The Flash Season 1. They kind of did a version of Flash Rebirth where Barry Allen comes back into the DC Universe. They changed a lot of things about the characters' backstories, but the framework of the story was there. Barry trying to go back in time and save his mother from dying. So don't be surprised if Supergirl does a version of a comic book storyline during Season 1. Next big villain, Helgramite. Now, he's mostly a Superman villain that was hired by LexCorp originally in the comics, but he also showed up in Suicide Squad one year later and after Prometheus destroyed Star City during Cry for Justice, which was kind of a Justice League story, but also a Green Arrow story. I know everybody wonders if Supergirl's going to cross over with Arrow and The Flash. The person at CBS that said that they originally weren't planning on sharing Supergirl with other networks is actually out. She actually left her job, so maybe we can change that. I'm not expecting any crossover in Season 1, though. Helgramite is a man-made supervillain. He actually subjected himself to this mutagenic process, which gave him these grasshopper insect-like features. Most of his superpowers are insect-based. Like, he can weave really strong cocoons around everyone. He has a super strong exoskeleton. He can jump really high. He's super strong. You can see that some of these powers are things that Supergirl can also do. Like, she's super strong. She can jump super far. Like, the villains they introduce on Supergirl have to be of a similar power level. So if you're wondering which comic book characters they're going to bring onto the show in the future, just think about characters that can match her abilities. That's how I think they were able to get Red Tornado, because I was actually kind of hoping that that character would go on the Flash, because Tio Morrow, the character that creates him, I mean, he's a, he's a supervillain, he used to work at Star Labs, just like Arthur Light did. You know, if you remember that Arrow Season 2 shout out. Arthur Light, the crazy guy that got fired, all of his tech's still in the basement. What I'll say about his look is that this is probably not what he's going to look like when we actually see him in an episode. 
I was kind of hoping that he'd be a deeper shade of red, but I think what they're doing is, is that they're just going to fix that in post-production. It's like the way Grant Gustin's Flash costume looks when it's not on screen. Like when you see behind the scenes pictures, the color looks a little bit duller. And then when you see it in the final completed episode, it looks color corrected, it's nice and shiny. So I think it's going to be the same deal with Red Tornado, because they actually his shade of red is pretty close to the Flash's costume shade of red. Next big villain, Reactron, also another villain that's been part of the Suicide Squad at various points in the comics. The two biggest storylines that he's been featured in lately, I mean relatively lately, were the new Krypton storyline, which was actually a while ago, that was a good Brainiac storyline, and then Blackest Night. I'd really recommend just checking out the new Krypton storyline, it's a great Superman story anyway. Now in the comics, his power just allows him to generate blasts of radiation, but it looks like he's firing energy. He also has a heart made of gold kryptonite. Now, I don't know if they're going to do that on the TV show. He might get a villain upgrade later in the series, but I really don't know what role kryptonite is going to play in the TV show. It does exist though. If you remember in the first Man of Steel movie, like in the, in the DC movies, kryptonite does not exist on Earth. It will, however, after Batman v Superman. Kryptonite will become a thing. Here's my big question for you guys. Which characters do you want to see go on the TV show? Like I know a lot of people want to see Lex Luthor and some of the other big Superman characters, but I think some of them will only be allowed to show up in the movies. I think Maxwell Lord is going to be the stand-in for people like Lex Luthor. Like the very corporate, very well-connected villains. Just think about characters that are of a similar power level to Supergirl. So like Martian Manhunter. Haven't heard anything about him showing up in the movies. That would totally leave him free for the TV show. And he was another character that was on Smallville. Like Smallville did their version of Maxwell Lord, you know, a couple of characters that we're going to see. The funny thing is, is that the actor that played Maxwell Lord on Smallville was also on Ally McBeal with Calista Flockhart. So it's all connected. And it also proves that I watch too much television. As you may have seen, they've actually changed the premiere date. So they moved it up. It's going to be October 26th. That's on a Monday night at 8.30 p.m. Like right after Big Bang Theory. Then the week after that, it's going to move to 8 p.m. So Mondays, we're going to have Gotham and Supergirl. Then Tuesday, we'll have The Flash and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And then Wednesday, we'll have Arrow. There's a bunch of other TV shows that I haven't mentioned yet, but those are just the ones that are coming back first. So be sure to subscribe to get everything. And there is some new Flash footage that I'm going to talk about next. So that's going to be my next video today. I'll try to get that out as fast as possible. It's not a new trailer. It's more of like a sneak peek, but they do talk about some things that we haven't heard about before. So while you guys wait for that Flash video to post, you can click here for my Gotham Season 2 Episode 1 video. It just aired. Make sure you watch it if you haven't seen it yet. And you can click here for all my other Arrow Flash trailers. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.